All right, I want to talk to you about insulin-like growth factor one. I think most of you have heard this term. Let me just review it for a minute. Insulin-like growth factor one is a powerful growth hormone in the body. Okay, it's made in the body. And uh, it looks like insulin, but it has just a little segment of the molecules that's different. Now, insulin is a growth promoter. The insulin you make in your pancreas promotes growth. But this hormone's even stronger. Its specific purpose is to promote growth. And there are certain things you can do to make your insulin-like growth factor one go up or down, and we want to talk about these. Now, at some time in your life, you want it to grow, I know. You know, like little kids, they can hardly wait till they get bigger, right? But at your stage of your life now, you don't want to grow anymore, do you? And you certainly don't want to grow any faster, do you? So you want to decrease the stimulation to growth as much as possible. Now, insulin-like growth factor one has become a very important subject. The dairy industry uses this, this knowledge to promote dairy because they finally have the mechanism to show why consuming dairy products make stronger bones because it raises insulin-like growth factor one, as we're going to talk about in a minute. But the downside to this is not only does insulin-like growth factor one promote the growth of normal tissues, like bones, but it promotes the growth of abnormal tissues, like cancer. And so in cancer research, insulin-like growth factor one is one of the hottest topics out there. Getting back to some animals who we are helping live longer, so this is good. What they did is they genetically modified these mice so that they didn't produce very much insulin-like growth factor one, and they found these mice would live 40% longer. And they looked younger, and they resisted disease. They described them as having better eyes and joints and brains and immunity than the other mice who didn't have this genetic variation. And so the thing that we know obviously has been substantiated in experimental studies, and that is that less insulin-like growth factor one, less stimulation of growth, causes you to live longer and healthier and look younger. You've seen this in your dogs. Little dogs live longer, right? I mean, how long does a terrier live? You know, 12, 13, 14 years? How long does a Rottweiler live? Yeah, 8, 9, 10 years. And if you look at the insulin-like growth factor 1 levels in these animals, you see that they are proportional to the size that they are. We've known for at least 40 years, there's been research to show that this occurs in people too. I'm not talking about big in terms of fat. I'm talking about big in terms of tall. In other words, they were stimulated to grow. This, this growth that occurs usually occurs in adolescence. Big people we know have more colon cancer, more breast cancer, and they die younger. Now, I haven't decided whether this is the best slide to show or this is the best slide to show. <laughs> to make you remember the point. Is this lady here? Does anybody know who she is? I took her picture last year when I was here. She, the reason I took her picture is she's got this beautiful tattoo on her arm that says vegan. Yeah. I thought this would be a nice picture to show along with the research that's been done on British women. Now, British women who are vegans, who are vegans, they eat an awful lot of soy products, I have to tell you, and a lot of oil in their diet, too, but they don't touch any animal products. When they studied 292 British women ages 20 to 70 years old, and they looked at their insulin-like growth factor 1 levels in their blood, what they found is something very important. Those who were vegans, again, eating plenty of soy and oil in their diet, those who were vegans had 13% lower insulin-like growth factor 1 levels in their bodies compared to the 92, <clears throat> or compared to the 99 that were meat eaters and the 101 that they studied who were lacto-ovo vegetarians. And they also did a similar study in men and found men who were vegans had 9% lower IGF-1 levels. So, you know, this is something that's been seen in human populations is you can change your IGF-1 levels by simply changing your diet. So what are some of the specific things that make a difference in terms of IGF-1 levels? Well, dairy products cause high IGF-1 levels to occur in people. But that makes sense, doesn't it? Because what is the purpose of milk? The purpose of milk is to cause things to grow. That's the ideal food when you are growing, or any animal's growing its most, any mammal grows its most, is when, it, when its ideal food is, is milk, right? So you would expect one of the things for milk to do is to cause insulin-like growth factor one levels to go up, and so it does. 
Uh, they did two studies, and both of them paid by the dairy industry, because as I told you, the dairy industry uses this to promote and to explain why cow's milk is good for the bones. I mean, they couldn't explain it in terms of calcium. That's just complete nonsense. So they had to come up with an explanation that had some scientific validity, and they've hit on it, is that when you eat dairy, what happens is you increase your growth hormones. As a consequence, the bones grow. Everything grows. And so in the two studies they paid for, one in postmenopausal women and one in adolescent girls, they found that adding about a glass of milk a day increased the insulin-like growth factor one levels in these females' bodies by about 10%. And it is the milk that does it. It's, the protein is an important stimulator, but milk is even a more important stimulator of insulate growth factor one production. They looked at eight-year-old boys, and they set up a, a test diet where they gave them the same amount of animal protein. And what they found when they compared eight ounces of low-fat meat to an equivalent amount of low-fat milk, same amount of protein, and it was the dairy that really caused the rises in the child's insulate growth factor one levels by about 19%. So of all the things that you consume, at least that's what I used to believe, of all the things that you consume, dairy products, which is obvious, would be the foods that increase your insulin-like growth factor one levels most. And so if you don't want to promote cancer growth, you don't want to grow older faster, you get dairy out of your diet. And I think most of you have already figured that out, right? Okay. This is going to bother you. In a study recently published, what do we got here? Oops. In a study recently published, published in uh, 2003, they took and set up an experiment where with one group of people, what they did is they gave them 40 grams of milk protein. You know, skim milk, that kind of thing, 40 grams of milk protein. And they watched what happened to their insulin-like growth factor one levels. And then they took these same subjects and they gave them 40 grams of isolated soy protein and watched what happened to their insulin-like growth factor one levels. And the results are down at the bottom. Milk concentrate increased insulin-like growth factor one levels by 36%. But isolated soy protein increased insulin-like growth factor one levels by 69% or twice as much. 40 grams of isolated soy protein. How do you get 40 grams of isolated soy protein? Or maybe I should say, is how many of you had 40 grams of isolated soy protein today? Uh, if you eat uh, one chicken soy patty and two soy burgers, you got 40 grams of isolated soy protein in. So you today increased your insulin growth factor one levels twice as much as you would if you had consumed dairy. If you consumed a, a, and I saw somebody in the airport today eating one of these, and I bet someone of you did it, one or two of you did too. If you ate one soy candy bar and a soy shake, you would take in 40 grams of isolated soy protein. Now, oh, come on. I used to eat those things, didn't you? They're so good, especially the chocolate ones. And this used to be my killer. I'd do this every morning. Every morning I used to do this. And I knew it wasn't right because I would get my plate out and I would look at the plate and it was full of grease. But they were still tasty, so I kept on it. I used to eat four of these guys every morning, the Morning Star sausages. And not only was it a greasy plate of sausage, but there was 40 grams of isolated soy protein in there, which does a lot of things besides increasing your insulin growth factor one level also causes tremendous amount of calcium loss and many other negative effects on the body. So I, I know there are at least a couple of people in this room who need to rethink this about your diet. You re need to rethink this soy, soy protein, particularly isolated soy proteins in your diet. It was a long transition for me, and fortunately I have the knowledge now, and I realize this is a very important step, and I hope that you get this figured out too because many of the positive changes you've made have been really good for you, but this is an important step you need to take.